We know in Queasy land both on the top of Kinjutsu Crossing. Now you may think this is odd as there's only two chests and a few floor spawns here. However, similar to Swizzy and Shimoki that we saw last week, Queasy lands on a pistol and tries to get tags out of the air, only getting one successful. At the same time, Vino grabs the kinetic blade from here and instantly flies across to the west houses so he can grab more loot. Combined, this gives them access to 34 chests total, as many kinetic blades as they'd want, and two potential ODM gear spawns if they opt to take this. To loot a little bit more efficiently, Queasy picks up the ODM gear and then destroys a bunch of the floors and walls, breaking a bunch of chests. Since all of these walls are just wooden, there's no real point in harvesting them anyway because you could just harvest the trees outside for a much more efficient looting path since you get more wood per swing. So this is actually a good time saver because it allows them to loot these chests much faster. But there is one massive problem with this drop spot there is no metal. However, nearby there is a gas station that is full of metal that Queasy can harvest all the way up to maxed. But there's one big problem, and that's Irazumi and Sined landing to the west. Now in games 1 and 2, Sined and Irazumi double landed onto this tower, had a very similar strategy where they grab the kinetic blades, then rotate over into the gas station to grab the metal there, cutting off Queasy's supply. So in games 3 and 4, Queasy adapted and rotated a little bit earlier out onto this ledge, gave him visibility over Irazumi and Sined drop spot, allowing him to do tons of damage to them. This essentially scared them off from moving over to the gas station as they knew there'd be a team holding them, which then allowed Queasy to grab it basically game after game. So just this small adjustment on his timing manipulated the players around him into giving him free loot. Back at Kenjutsu, Vino has kinetic bladed over to the west side where he can take advantage of Twee and Jalen and harvest them for more damage as they're looting. He's in minimal danger here because even if he gets traded surge back, there's a lot of mushrooms you can use to heal and there's environmental here like slurp barrels left behind at the drop spot that he can always recuperate that shield with. So there's only two teams landing around Queasy and Vino, and they've managed to farm Surge on both of them. Now Queasy and Vino have always been an edge map team, and notice their rotates. Queasy leads the team around the outside of the map, allowing them to cut off line of sight from any of the players that are close to them. And since it's already the edge of the map, there's already going to be minimal players here, which is what we call the dead side. But there are still some players, which allows them to third party from a distance. Since they never get too close, they can always always get tags and then disengage, continue their rotate on and keep away from everyone else. Not only this, since there's not many players around them, this gives them a lot more opportunities to re-harvest any of the materials that they may have used up until this point. Now this is just a guess, but because they're the edge map, this means that they're more likely to get a combat cache that's near the edge of the map. If you're in the center of the map and it spawns between you and another player somewhere also close to the center of the map, that means there's going to be a large amount of players around you. However, if you're at the edge of the map and it spawns between you and another player there, well there's more chance of you being able to get it because there's less players around you. And of course, they always beeline this because this gives them the slurp juice, but also that means that then they can use those big pots they had in their inventory to trade more damage. In this game in particular, they also rotate around to shattered slabs and get extra damage on players in there. Around the three vaults in the map, anywhere between the second to the fifth zone, there's nearly always some players in here, whether they're looting the vault or trying to scavenge whatever's left in there afterwards. So you can always use these players rotating out of here for extra storm surge damage. Through the next zone, they continue to re-harvest their brick where wherever they can, whether it's underneath this bridge or in any of the buildings that are nearby. And they can do this because they've managed to gain so much damage earlier before this that when the storm surge threshold pops up, there are 335 above. The entire game has been very easy for them. However, now with the zone getting smaller, their dead side strategy becomes less efficient. Knowing this, Queasy spots a free hill closer to the center of this fifth zone and makes a great play to kinetic blade towards it. And because of their great timing, doesn't lose any HP in the process. In a sense, this was a risk to take because they they had a great base built behind where they could continue to have additional materials. However, had they waited, another player could have claimed this hill and caused blockade for them to rotate later on if they pulled a max distance zone. And that sixth zone pulls exactly max distance to where their previous base was located, so this risk paid off. Rather than being held from this position, they're able to hold all of the players that are coming behind them in the zone, further accumulating more damage. From this position, they wait until the sixth zone starts to close, and then Queasy decides to kinetic blade down the middle of the these trees, cutting off line of sight from any of the players sitting on top of the hills waiting for them. And yet again, they make another mid-game rotate without taking a single tag of damage. Since they ended up on the edge of zone, they're clustered with a bunch of other players, and one mistake here could end their game. That's why when looking for shots, they're extra careful to cover every single angle that they can't see. But because they continued this aggression, Vino manages to pick up a knock, which is converted into a full elimination. And this play really shows their confidence. They double kinetic blade onto the wall because they hear the teammate of this 
player being tagged for Storm Surge damage, and Queezy slaps out another Easy Elam. Continuing this aggression, despite being in the congested side of the zone, allows them to loot both of the bodies, getting up to capped materials. Since they have yet again another max distance 7th zone, they double kinetic blade, using this ridge to hide their line of sight from the other players, and yet again take 0 damage on another mid game rotate because they chose a good path. And next, they make the play that's going to win them the game. Last week, there was a change to the zones in the 6th and the 7th zones, where previously these were partials, now the next zone is moved significantly further away from the centre of the previous one. Now if you understand how the zones move, this means that this side of the zone here will be congested with a massive amount of players as they all will have rotated from the outside of the previous zone, meaning in the 6th and 7th zones there are massive dead sides. With that in mind, just before the 7th zone closes, Queasy and Vino triple kinetic blade all the way to the other side of the zone, keeping themselves away from every other player. This means that when they get a lucky 8th zone pool and it's relatively close to them, not one single other player is in it and they can kinetic blade yet again and build up on height. At this point they have the heals to win heal off, they also have the materials to win the game from their fantastic mid game, now it's all about not making a single mistake. As soon as they've built up on high ground, Queasy notices that there's an old base located in Storm and if the zone pulls that way, they're going to have to base on top of that to prevent any other team trying to take height from them. However, a team at the opposite side of the zone also builds up for an equal level of high ground. Now they instantly start to apply pressure to them and get a good amount of damage off because if the zone starts to pull towards them, this will give them an opportunity to kinetic blade onto height. However, this opponent team blocks them off with two metal walls and Queasy and Vino lose the opportunity to weaken them further, so they just place a couple ramps on top of their base to prevent being shot from this angle. Luckily, they pull the ninth zone, the first moving zone, and they instantly ramp towards it, up into the sky and away from the rest of the lobby in metal. High ground seems to be secured, however, a player down below uses the ODM gear and knocks them out. Since they both have kinetic blades, they kinetic blade up into the sky and because of their good scouting earlier on, they remember this old base is there and land to connect to this, regaining them the high ground. After ramping further up into the sky, Queasy always tries to focus the players who are second height, who are very far down below them, but in particular if they're using brick or metal. This is because these players have a ton of materials left in their inventory, showing that they're the stronger teams in the lobby and weakening these teams increases their chances of winning. Of course, these teams also are the most likely to try and retake high ground, so this acts as a deterrent. Whilst up on high ground, Queasy does something that I've seen him do all the way back in Chapter 2 Season 6 when they won Trio FNCS, and that is always maintain height on the right hand side of the zone. There are three main reasons for this. Number one, anytime you peek down below, you're going to be looking off of a right hand peak, which means you're less exposed to the players down below. The second reason is that it just gives you one direction to look at. You don't have to look over your left and to your right, you can just look to your left and you're good to see everything you need to. And this is incredibly important with how many players are using the kinetic blades now. And the third is that it's quite common for players down below to mirror you, aka build underneath your tarp and slowly make their way up so they can retake high ground. Now this doesn't matter if you're this many layers up above high ground like these guys are right now, but in other games this prevents players from going directly underneath you as it's much harder to do this at the edge of the zone. The win is heal off, which no one really cares about, but Vino does make a little bit of a mistake here. Now he drops down to try and frag out down below, but has two slurp juice in his inventory. It could also be one because replay sucks sometimes and is bugged, but either way, he should have popped this before he dropped down because this would have allowed him to stay and frag down there a lot longer, however unfortunately he died, giving this to the other teams. Whilst he's down there, Queasy Kinetic Blades off into the storm, and since he has his slurp juice popped after eating some more pizza, he can actually play a medkit that he found on the floor, winning him the game. Yay, we love heal off. Of course, this victory round led them to a win overall in the week 2 of Major 2, but if you want to see the secret strategies of how Swizzy and Shimoki won week number one, click this video right now.